It's mind-blowing to see how many students fall for the traps when they see this limit problem on their exam. Even ChatGPT got this wrong when I put it in myself. You're going to want to stick around until the end because the answer is not what you think, so let's make sure we do this carefully. For this limit, by inspection, it does look like the squeeze limit theorem, which I have a video for that above, but there are some key differences, mainly the fact that we now have this absolute value sign. So you can't rush this limit problem or use blind memorization. We need to actually work with breaking the domain up into some parts. The first thing I want to show you, though, is the reason why we even talk about L'Hopital's rule here is because when you plug in zero for x, notice that sign of the absolute value of zero all over two times zero will give you one of the indeterminate forms, zero over zero, where we're allowed to use that L'Hopital's rule. But we have to make sure we strategically approach how to use it. Because going back to this limit right here, since we have the absolute value sign, we gotta treat this almost like a piecewise function, right? We gotta break the domain into parts because the behavior changes whether we're to the right of the origin or to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna think about X either being strictly non-negative or strictly negative. So for non-negative, I'm going to talk about the case where X is greater than or equal to zero. And this one's simple, right? Because sine of the absolute value of X would be the same as just sine of X. Why? Well, when you take the absolute value of something that isn't negative, you get back the same thing. So the absolute value here really isn't doing anything. So I can just drop the absolute value altogether because honestly, having a limit where you don't have an absolute value in there is just simpler to work with. Okay, now for the case where X is strictly negative, in other words, it's less than zero, you gotta be a little bit careful here because by inspection, you might goof this one up, but think about it visually on the unit circle. Imagine you're at the origin and you're going in the negative direction just under the origin. Well, when you're just under the origin, your Y coordinate is negative, right? But because we have an absolute value here, it flips the sign. So what this means is we can take sine of absolute value of X and rewrite it as just negative sine of X. You're taking something that was a slightly negative value, making it positive here. And the other disclaimer is we are talking about very, very, very small magnitudes of X in this video, because remember, sine goes up and down. So we can't universally say that a positive or negative value of X will always give you a sign output that's negative or positive. Speaking of which, because we're strictly talking about very small values of X, there is another shortcut where you can solve this limit without L'Hopital's rule altogether. And here's a hint. It comes from the Euler series for sine of X. Let me know in the comments below if you see it, but moving on, I'm just going to use L'Hopital's rule in this video. So going back to the original limit now, what I want to think about is two cases, right? I'm going to approach zero from just the right of the origin. So for very small positive values of X, and then I'm going to repeat it from the other side, from the left. So starting with the right, where X is like, say, 0 0.0001, et cetera, remember that the absolute value of sine of X all over 2X can be rewritten in such a way as we showed above, where you can just drop the absolute value altogether. And before I forget to mention this, if you haven't already, if you're finding value in my videos and want more help for your exams, be sure to ninja kick that subscribe button and pick up some cool ninja swag in the links below. That'll help you guys out too. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop the absolute value sign. And this is really easy to work with now because I can just use L'Hopital's rule here, right? If you don't remember, all you do is you take the derivative of the top and then the derivative of the bottom, giving us the limit as X approaches zero from the right of cosine of X over two. And check this out, I can just plug in zero right now, right? Because I'm not dividing by zero. And that's going to give me an output of one half. But hold your horses, a big mistake here is to say we're done. Remember, we got to now work with the cases where X is negative. So going back to the original problem now where we approach the origin from the left using this little minus sign here, because of the work we did above, remember, we can rewrite sine of the absolute value of X on the numerator as negative sine of X. So once again, I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule here. I'll take the derivative of the top and bottom, and this will give me this new limit expression where I've got negative cosine of X all over two. Now check this out. When you plug in zero here, you don't get one half like we did before. You get negative one half. And this is why you can't just memorize shortcuts in all cases because if you don't understand the math you're doing, you're gonna think the limit exists 